How prepared is your child's school for in-person learning? The local districts expressing surprise and doubt over state education officials' goal to get elementary students fully in person for class by April. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo is live for us now with more. Audrey? So for the whole pandemic, we've heard that six feet, this distance, is the gold standard to make sure that you don't spread coronavirus between two people, six foot social distance. Now state education officials are essentially cutting that in half, saying that schools only have to space desks a minimum of three feet to, in order to stop the spread of COVID-19 between students. Some local districts, however, are saying that that doesn't sit well with them. Six foot is, is what a lot of districts are using as the standard, and I mean, and that's what we're currently using. Devin Sheehan is a school committee member for Holyoke Public Schools, and he tells Western Mass News he was surprised to learn that six feet is not the standard that state education officials are using when it comes to learning during the COVID-19 pandemic. The State Department of Elementary and Secondary Education announcing their back-to-school goals, hoping to have all elementary students back in class five days a week by April. To achieve this, DESE Commissioner Jeff Riley says students can be spaced three to six feet apart and that state officials will work with districts struggling to meet even that minimum. There's no guarantee that we're going to be able to go to three feet. Westfield School Superintendent Stefan Zaporowski says typical class sizes are around 20 students for grades K through 2 and 25 for grades 3 through 12. Desk spacing is not the only concern. Saporowski says the district could have to add lunch periods because the state's recommendation to have kids eat in their classrooms won't work. Our teachers are guaranteed a duty-free lunch period, so we don't have the staff to allow our staff to eat and cover the classrooms. Across Massachusetts, teachers are still waiting to be eligible for the vaccine as educators in neighboring Connecticut are able to get the shot March 1st. Getting the vaccine will help them feel more comfortable with being in the school buildings, then I'm all for it. Massachusetts educators, along with school administrators, are waiting for more guidance from the state on this proposal they say is currently lacking. There are a lot of complications and it's it's certainly um, easy to issue an edict from the top. But when you're down here at our level and we have to work with, uh, you know, with what we have, um, you know, it, it's a little bit different. We reached out to the largest school district in Western Mass, Springfield, and their superintendent declined to comment on this proposal. Now, state education officials have said this will be a phased in approach, and they've also said that they're gonna offer additional transitional periods for certain school districts, citing those that are currently still fully remote. Live in Springfield, Audrey Russo for Western Mass News. Turning now to the latest coronavirus numbers in our state over the last two weeks, the Mass Department of Public Health reporting more than 1,700 new cases of COVID-19 today. That brings our total number of confirmed cases in the Bay State to more than 543,000. Of those, more than 33,000 are believed to currently be active. And the state also reporting 60 new deaths from the virus. The statewide death toll stands at 15,624. Western Mass News is your vaccine authority. Some frustrations remain surrounding the mass vaccination site out at the Eastfield Mall. A viewer reached out to the Western Mass, reached out to Western Mass News, upset after her husband struggled to walk through the mall to get to the vaccination site. Western Mass News reporter Sarah Grinelli has the very latest. Sandra Thorne and her husband both got their second dose of the coronavirus vaccine on Sunday. And I got the, our walker out of the trunk and we started toward the door where it says entrance only. We saw the cruiser sitting in front of the do not enter doors, but didn't see anyone in it. Sandra tells Western Mass News it took them a while to make their way down to the vaccination site since they had to take a few breaks. He has oxygen and it was a long walk. That's, that's like, I don't know how, how far, felt like a quarter of a mile walk. So we decided to use a tracking app to see the distance it takes to get from the outside of the mall into the vaccination site. And it's less than a quarter of a mile, but it took me more than 300 steps. Curative, the company running the site, says people with things like walkers and wheelchairs can head right through the front door. However, Western Mass News found signs that say do not enter and exit only. Curative sent us a statement that reads in part, 
Curative has been made aware of this issue at the Eastfield Mall and is updating the signage. The Springfield Police Department has two officers who are working at the site. Spokesperson Ryan Walsh says they are there to help. If you have any questions on the outside on your way in, just go locate that officer and they're there to help. Meanwhile, for Sandra, although she and her husband now have both doses of the shot, she wants to make sure no one else struggles like they did. Better signage, a shorter walk, and a curative person meeting anyone at the door who would need a wheelchair or a walker to make the walk. Sarah Grinelli, Western Mass News. New at 6, the state is hoping to make things easier for those who are looking to make a COVID-19 vaccine appointment. Today, Governor Baker announced the state's working to improve its vaccine finder website to create what he described as a digital waiting room. If there's high traffic on the website, those trying to make a vaccine appointment will be placed in a virtual waiting room area. The improvement should be in place tomorrow when new appointments will then become available. Western Mass News is teaming up with Mercy Medical Center and Trinity Health of New England to tackle your COVID-19 vaccine questions live on Facebook tonight starting at 7 p.m. You can also watch on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV by downloading our free streaming Western Mass News app. Developing news now in Springfield where a deadly shooting is under investigation. Police say one man died after being shot on Main Street in the South End. Authorities say while they were on their way to the scene, they saw the person who was shot being taken to the hospital in a car. Officers then started doing what they could to help the victim before the ambulance arrived. The man was taken to Bay State Medical Center where he died from his injuries. One resident tells Western Mass News this happens too often. It's scary, you know, it's happening on a regular basis, you know, it's a shame, you know, it's, it's scary because you just never know when you're walking out the door what's going to happen. The victim's identity has not been released. We have reached out to the district attorney's office for more information on this shooting, but have not yet heard back. Developing news now out of California as legendary golfer Tiger Woods continues to recover from serious injuries he suffered in a car crash Tuesday. His family telling us he is awake and in recovery mode as we speak. Western Mass News reporter Kayla Burton joins us live now in studio, getting answers from a local doctor on how both safety procedures from Woods and the emergency crews who helped him may have saved his life. Kayla. Kristen Jordan, despite Woods suffering multiple leg injuries from this car crash, doctors say it really is great that he was wearing a seatbelt because if he didn't, it could have been way worse. This after the 45-year-old golf legend lost control of his car Tuesday morning. Officials tell Western Mass News his car flipped over, as you can see. And unfortunately for Woods, he suffered multiple open fractures to his right leg, as well as his foot and ankle injuries. Though these injuries are troublesome to say the least, doctors say it could have been way worse if he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. A seatbelt is absolutely very important in any time where you may be potentially thrown from the vehicle. He could have been thrown, especially if that vehicle rolls. I've, I've seen it on scene where someone's not wearing a seatbelt. Uh, they hit something, they either get ejected through the windshield or tossed out through the side window as the vehicle rolls. But it wasn't only Woods who took the right safety measures ahead of time. The Los Angeles deputy sheriff who first arrived to help Woods did so as well. Instead of trying to free Woods from his stuck position, he made sure he was conscious, lucid, and then continued to talk with him until other emergency crews came to help, something Dr. Jared Beltran from Bay State Medical Center says was significant. Sheriff's deputy is a first responder and has limited medical equipment. Um, if you move somebody, there's always potential that bones can um, move. And Dr. Beltran also getting into the details of how Woods' injuries could affect his long-term golfing career. Coming up later on Western Mass News tonight, you'll hear more on that. Plus, how soon Woods could be, be back to his old self again. For now, live in studio, Kayla Burton, Western Mass News. Well, this is a pretty sweet picture that came in from viewer Susan. She caught this almost looks like a rainbow around the sun. Uh, normally when we see it very far away from the sun, we call that a sun halo. But when it's this close to the sun, it's actually called a corona or some cloud iridescence. But it's still very cool and an awesome sight on this beautiful day. We had highs in the upper 40s just about everywhere this afternoon. North Adams, the winner as far as our climate sites go, with just shy of 50 degrees. Though downtown Springfield, I think probably ended up around 50. We're down to 40. 
44 right now. Breezes out of the south steady at 15 miles an hour puts wind chills into the 30s. So that breeze is definitely adding a chill. Everybody is sitting in the lower to middle 40s right now, except for North Adams, which is still at 49 degrees. But their wind is gusting to 40 miles an hour. That seems like an isolated gust, but still we are dealing with gusty breezes out of the south ahead of an approaching cold front. A few spotty showers will be possible through about midnight as the front gets ready to push through, uh, but it's not looking like any kind of a washout, and I think showers will be very hit or miss. Other than that, just a lot of patchy clouds, temperatures holding steady, falling uh, into the lower and middle 40s for everybody. And then as we hit tomorrow morning, many of us will start off just above freezing. We'll have plenty of sunshine throughout the day, but it will be a blustery day and a bit cooler as highs return to near 40. We'll take a look at the rest of your weather coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you. Jenna, thanks. Now at 6 over in Springfield, crews battled to extinguish a fire at a laundromat. Earlier this afternoon, Springfield Fire responded to a dryer fire at Laundromax on Allen Street. They were able to quickly put it out with minimal damage. As of now, no injuries have been reported. Springfield Arson and Bomb Squad is currently investigating.